Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. We're just admitting people in from the waiting room, so we'll give it a couple of minutes and then get cracking. Um, and people who've joined first, I'm afraid you're going to hear me say this a few times, um, just so that, that we catch everyone. Um, just a quick note that we're recording this session. Um, if you could kind of keep cameras off, that would be really helpful. Um, and we'll get cracking in just a couple of minutes, see if there's anybody else who joins us. And then we'll get ready to go. Thank you all for making the time to, to come and see us. Um, we really appreciate it. Perfect. Okay, the waiting room looks like it's settled down a little bit. Um, so I'm going to ease us into it and we'll get cracking. Um, thank you all for giving up some of your time over lunch. I know it's a very precious, very precious time. Um, so we, we really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, just a, a final note that we're recording this session today. Um, so if you are okay keeping cameras off, that would be really helpful and audio as well. Um, just also a note from me that we do have closed captions available for this session. Um, you can find them on the toolbar along the bottom of your screen if you're on desktop. Um, if you're on mobile, you might have to click the more three dots and, and set it there. Um, but you just need to hit show captions um, and you can display those captions as well if you need them. Um, we're going to kick off with some introductions um, and we'll kind of set the scene a little bit and explain why we're here. Um, so my name's Harry. Um, it's really great to, to be here with you all. Um, my journey with the Young Trustees Movement started probably about two and a half years ago um, when I joined the movement as one of its ambassadors. Um, and I've kind of hung around ever since, not really been able to get, to get rid of me. Um, I'm a member of the transition board at the moment, um, and I'll explain a little bit more about what that actually means as we kind of get, get going today. Um, but really great to be here with you all. Um, my pronouns are he, him. Claire, do you want to say a quick hello? Hi, everyone. Really lovely to be here with you all today. Yeah, my name's Claire. My pronouns are she, her. Um, I'm currently interim CEO for the Young Trustees Movement, so um, taking over from a wonderful human called Mita, um, who's currently on maternity leave, will be back in early spring next year. Um, I, yeah, I joined about four months ago, so still relatively new in post. Um, but I've been working in the charity sector for the last 10 years, and I'm also a trustee myself. And Priscilla, did you want to say hello? Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Priscilla. I'm the administrative assistant um, here at YTM. Um, I am an incoming master's student, and I started in the role about one, two months ago. Um, but yeah, really exciting to see so many of you here. Thank you for coming. And Priscilla is the absolute wizard who is sitting behind this, this event today um, and also the whole application process and kind of making everything run really smoothly. Um, so thank you. Um, yeah, and it, it's great to have you here. Um, I'm leading the recruitment process for, for new members of the board on behalf of the transition board, um, which is why I'm here. Um, and obviously doing that with, with Claire's support and alongside Claire um, as our, our interim CEO. Um, so that is how it is. A final note, just for anyone who's joined us in the last few minutes, um, we are recording this session today. Apologies if you're hearing me say that for the fourth time now. Um, so if you're able to keep kind of audio and, and cameras off, that would be really helpful. Um, there will be an opportunity to use the chat function for, for questions later. Um, and closed captioning. Um, captions are also available as well, um, just from the toolbar at the bottom of the screen. Um, so that's the introductions done. Um, thank you all so much for joining us and we'll get into while we're here. Um, well, I'm going to run through a quick kind of slide deck just for the first 10 minutes or so, just to kind of explain a little bit about the role and set the scene a little bit for you all. Um, and then we'll get into it from there. So the journey of the Young Trustees movement so far and kind of where we've, where we've come from. Um, we, we are a relatively young movement, so we were founded in 2019. Um, it was a research project that was funded by the Blairgrave Trust um, and led by the Social Change Agency um, and was still incubated um, within the Social Change Agency or the Social Change Nest, 
um, at the moment. Now, um, that research project um, kind of found a real need to, to increase diversity on boards. Um, and so an amazing group of kind of collaborative funders came together, um, gave us some funding and a platform, um, and hence the Young Trustees movement came into existence. Um, it's really important to note that we, we didn't invent the concept of a young trustee. There was really great work happening a long time before this. Um, a guy called Alex Swallows did, did some awesome work um, with young charity trustees before that um, and very kindly gifted those social media channels to us um, when, when the movement first, first got up and running um, back in October 2019. Um, there was also a report from the Charities Aid Foundation back in 2015 looking at the importance of young people in governance. Um, so we, we, we are not the first people in this space, but we are taking up the mantle and really shouting about the importance of diversity in charity boardrooms. And that, that's, that's kind of why we exist. And this was our founding mission. So this is kind of the first reason that, that, that we said Young Trustees Movement existed. Um, we were aiming to double the number of young trustees who were under the age of 30 by 2024. Um, so that, that is what we were what we were set up to do. Um, now we kind of take a very systematic approach to our work. Um, so we think a lot about social justice um, and about the real importance of having diverse decision making within charity boards um, in order to really, really enable um, kind of sustainability of those organizations and to enable decisions to be made. Um, with a variety of perspectives. We really believe in the importance of that. And we've learned a lot over the last four years as an organization about how important that is um, and also how to best embed diversity in, in governance structures within charities. So that is kind of where we came from. Um, and that was our founding mission, was, was to double the number of trustees who were under the age of 30 by 2024. It was 3% of trustees um, who were under the age of 30 um, at the time. Um, and while the date is a bit hazy, we know that a good number of those trustees were sabbatical officers at student unions who became a trustee kind of almost accidentally by nature of their sabbatical officer role. Um, and we know then that a good bunch of, of those, those trustees, kind of that made up basically the vast majority of trustees under the age of 25. So there was this division within our age group as well, which we were really interested in. So where we are today, obviously 2024 is coming around very, very quickly. Um, and our mission was, was linked in with 2024. So at the moment, we're doing a lot of work to rethink our mission and to really take stock of the impact that, that we've been able to have um, since, we, since we were founded in 2019. Um, yeah, we've done a lot of work to kind of really, really work on that and, and take stock of, of what we've been able to do. Um, in terms of rethinking our mission, um, we are still a, a youth governance organisation. We're still advocating for young people in charity boardrooms and shouting really loudly about that. But we're thinking about how we can create a mission that not only talks about getting young people into charity boardrooms, but really focuses on the depth of their experience when they get there. So how do we make sure that we not only recruit incredible young people, but how do we also make sure that we retain them within those roles and make sure that they can continue to have a really positive impact in it for a long time to come. We're also thinking about kind of the multifaceted identities that people have as we're rethinking our mission. Um, we've always said from the get go, that if we were to increase the number of young people on boards, but racial diversity on boards, gender diversity on boards, et cetera, didn't change, then we wouldn't really be doing, doing our job. So we're thinking about how do we reshape our mission so that it you know, maintains that focus on age, which is what, what, we, what we exist for primarily, but also takes stock of, of broader diversity changes that needs to happen, and also takes stock of kind of the depth of experience that those young trustees should have. So a lot's changing. Um, it's a really exciting time to join us as we're kind of doing that thinking and kind of really looking at, at what we've done. Um, what we are doing at the moment, we're sharing opportunities for young people to join charity boards. We have an opportunities hub on our website where, where charities who are, who are seeking trustees and seeking to diversify their boards can, can post and share opportunities with young people. Um, we know that that gets a lot of traffic and is a really impactful way to support young people into governance roles. We're also delivering some really impactful training programs um, to support young people 
um, in, in governance roles for the first time um, to make sure they've got the skills that they need and also to support boards as a whole to really make sure that they're equipped to take on and, and work with young trustees um, and make sure that the, the, the whole board really kind of takes a look at itself and kind of understands how diverse are we, what work do we need to do to improve. So delivering some really impactful training. Um, we also have our free champion training every month, which has been a bit of a staple since we've started um, and is a really great way for us of, of growing the movement and growing the impact. We've then also got a range of really impactful advocacy pieces that we've run. Um, so blogs that run through our website really highlighting young people in, in governance roles, um, as well as um, campaigns. So we ran a big campaign during Small Charities Week last year, for example, with some events and that kind of thing. So really kind of loud voice in the advocacy arena, um, delivering some training programs and really sharing those opportunities for young people to join charity boards. On a kind of more strategic level, um, we're also really working at the moment on diversifying our income streams um, and building an organization that is really well placed to kind of develop in the future. As I mentioned earlier, at the moment, we're incubated within the Social Change Nest. Um, so they, they're fisc fiscally host our organization. Um, and, and the plan at the moment is for us to, to become our own independent um, registered organization outside of the Social Change Nest and registered within our own right. Um, and the new board that we'd recruit will be really instrumental in supporting us through navigating that process, um, supporting us through the registration, and then going on to become the first trustees of the organization when that registration does, does happen. So there's that organizational strategic piece going on. Um, and then there's also our really impactful um, programs and the work that, that we're delivering. Claire, do you want to come in and say anything about kind of the work that we do um, you're involved on the ground day to day. Is there anything I've missed that, that you think we could say? And as you do that, I'm just going to flash up on the screen um, some examples of some of the things that we've done over the last couple of years. Yeah, maybe I can speak to some of the work around our funding, Harry, um, in terms of some of the context there, in terms of how we've been funded so far, um, which might be interesting to some of you. We We were really fortunate that we had a group of sort of, I guess what we call like our founding funders that came together in quite an unconventional way. Um, so we have Bladegrave, Co-op Foundation, Esme Fairburn, Paul Hamlin Foundation, who all came together to collectively say like, we really need to fund this movement, we really need to fund this mission and have provided us with, I guess, some really essential core funding, some backbone funding that has taken us from 2019 up until this point. Um, and we still have a really great working relationship with them and we're still talking to them about what future collaboration looks like but we're also at this point of transition thinking about how do we make sure that we have a resilient funding model have a sustainable funding model that takes us into the next couple of years with whatever that new strategy might look like um, so that's definitely a big focus of what I'm doing at the moment and and what we'll definitely have support from our new trustees on um, yeah I'll stop there Harry perfect um, yeah, and you can you can get a sense from this slide here some of the kind of range of events that that we've run. Um, so board boost down in the bottom left there that is the kind of training program, the latest iteration that that we've been delivering. Um, we've run co creation settings with our sessions with our movement to develop campaigns. Um, we've run workshops for young trustees and aspiring young trustees to support them with with applications. Um, and we've run workshops for to kind of really create a community and create a supportive environment for for young people who are trustees, so opportunities for them to meet up, connect, share experiences, learn from one another, and that kind of thing. So that, that this is an example of, of kind of the sort of work that, that we do um, at the moment as a movement. So where we're going, as I mentioned, we're, we're transitioning now to become an independently registered organization. Um, and we're looking for board members who are gonna go on that journey with us um, becoming the first trustees once once that registration happens um, and serving as a member of our board from January 2024. So we're not saying that that registration is going to be in place in January 2024. What we're saying is that we want these individuals to come in, really be members of our board, you know, um, shape kind of strategic thinking, decision making and that kind of thing. Um, really support the organisation through that transition, support the staff team through that transition and then go on to become our first trustees once registered. In terms of the application itself and what we're looking for, 
Um, there's there's two things really. I think one thing that that we really advocate for other people to do when they're recruiting, and so something that that we believe is obviously really important. We want to practice what we preach is making sure that a diversity of of perspectives are, are really influencing our decision making. Um, I love this graphic, the the wheel on the left, um, which just kind of I think highlights some of the different facets of of people's identity. Um, and we're, we're really interested in hearing from people from a really broad range of backgrounds and perspectives. Um, there is a, a, a part of the application that will just ask you to highlight what, what perspectives you, you feel you can offer um, as well. The thing that I want to say here is that everyone's lived experience is really valuable and is really unique and different. Um, so don't feel as though you have to kind of fit yourself into a certain category when you're talking about what your perspective is. It may be that you've been a trustee before. It may be that you've got no experience of charity governance. They're equally valuable, equally valid. Um, what really matters to us is how you're going to apply those perspectives that you can bring to the work that we do to really help us make, make decisions in the best way and in the best interests of the charity. Um, so that diversity of perspectives is really important. Um, we believe that that anyone can be a can be a trustee, and we really want to 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 see that in our board as well. Um, we had quite a few questions from people beforehand for from people who kind of pre-submitted questions around whether there was an age that we were looking for particularly. Um, we really believe in the importance of of intergenerational governance at, at young trustees movement, um, and so they, this opportunity is open to applicants of of all ages. Um, you have to be 18 to be registered as a trustee with the Charity Commission. Um, so that, that that kind of requirement exists there in order to qualify to be able to register as a trustee. Um, but we are open to applications from, from candidates of, of ages kind of over and above above that. Um, and there's, there's, no, there's no limit. Um, so don't, don't panic at all about that limit. Um, and that, that age limit kind of, yeah, isn't, isn't there. Which I think is what quite a lot of people have asked us about. Um, we think that diversity of perspectives, diversity of ages is, is really important in, in driving our movement forward, um, because not only do we need to support young trustees, but we also need to influence right across the sector, um, including people over the age of 30, um, to really kind of you know make, make the change and drive the change that, that we're looking to, to create. So that's really important to us. The other thing that, that we're really looking for in, in a, an application um, is we're looking for an ability to kind of talk about and fit with some of our values as an organisation. You can find and, and read about these online, but our values are really important to us. We really try and live and breathe these through everything that we do um, and through kind of how we work. Um, so we're really looking for people who we feel kind of align with and fit with our values. Um, you can see see our three cultural values there, um, which is empathy and integrity. So thinking about how we kind of act with kindness, how we kind of you know support one another, um, and that that kind of work is is really important to us. Curious and challenging. We're really looking for people who are you know willing to ask questions, who are willing to kind of share viewpoints and opinions and that kind of thing. Um, recognizing that that's a difficult thing to do, and we'll obviously make sure that we provide support and an inclusive environment that everyone can feel comfortable and empowered to share opinions within um but but we want really looking for people who are curious who ask questions who you know ask questions about systems and about structures um who really think about inequality and social justice and who are really keen to kind of challenge those things the last thing then is that that we're really interested in people who are kind of have a, a self-awareness and who are interested in what we call nourishing themselves and others um what we really mean by that is People who understand that, that no human being is perfect, no human being is biased free, and people who are really interested in kind of going on that, that journey of developing themselves and developing one another. Um, so that, that, that awareness and that critical reflection of things that, that you'd like to work on, of areas that kind of are, are really important to you personally to develop, um, and that understanding of what you can offer. It may be skills, maybe experience, maybe perspectives that, that you can give. Um, to really kind of drive drive what we do forward. Claire, is there anything you want to say on our on our values and kind of the ways that we work? Thanks, Harry. Yeah, maybe I can just second that. Um, yeah, the values feel very strong in the movement in in the team, and um, it's definitely something that the boards really help to shape and and hold true. 
so in in the board meetings that's something I've really experienced is you know for example that self-awareness and nourishment of self and others that care and that consideration has really been a really strong tenant in how the board have um gone about their work how the board have engaged with me and the wider team and um you know we definitely would be looking for people that want to continue with that and make sure that it's um taken forward and and really developed further so um yeah definitely looking for people that have that um values driven way of working excuse me <coughs> or have that interest in, in understanding more about it and and learning with that as well for sure yeah and i think the the really key thing if, if you take one thing away from this call and you go away and put an application in which i really hope that, that everybody here does um if if there's one thing that you that you take away from this i really hope that you take away that we, we just want you to bring 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 yourself as you are we don't we don't have kind of certain requirements you know we're not we're not expecting people to try and talk about you know the 15 years experience that they've got in x or you know etc uh, that kind of thing we're, we're really just encouraging you to bring yourselves with the experience that you've got talk about your passion for the movement talk about how you can kind of apply the skills that you've got um and, and you know really apply that to our work so that's what we're really interested in the, that combination of the perspectives the skills um and you know the experience that you've got um but we're, we're not expecting kind of you know all candidates to have really senior level experience within organizations experience on trustee boards etc um we really understand that the diversity of thought and diversity of perspective is so so important in shaping this movement moving forwards um so that that really is what we're looking for Perfect. You will be glad to know I am about to stop talking. Um, I just want to share that, that ultimately the other the other thing, this this is a fact, I shared this earlier on, this has kind of been pretty central to our comms and our advocacy work um, that, that we've done. The fact that less than 3% of charity trustees are under 30 and the core reason that, that we exist is to change that. Um, if you're somebody who reads that first sentence and gets a little bit angry, feels things need to change, thinks Thank that's not right, then we would absolutely um, love love to have an application from you because that that is the the thing that we're working to try and change. Um, that's what we're hoping to drive. Um, and I think yeah, if you if you read that and kind of you know feel that things need to change, then that's that's what we're seeking really. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, that is the, the end of the slides. Um, I'm going to speak briefly to some of the practicalities um, of, of the process, and then we'll open it up to open the floor up to some questions. Um, I'll run through kind of some of the common questions we've had beforehand from people, um, and then we can we can go from there. Um, so in terms of the application process itself, um we've really tried to make that as easy and as accessible and as straightforward as possible um you'll be asked to answer a few short questions as part of the application um some obviously demographic driven questions um things like kind of you know information we need to contact you email addresses etc um there's then three recruitment questions which we're going to be scoring when we're shortlisting people um, those three questions are asking you to tell us about a time when you've had to think creatively or strategically. They're asking you to tell us what you think good governance means and looks like. And they're asking you if you had a magic wand and could change one thing to make the world more socially just, what would you change and why? So they're the three questions that we're asking people to answer as part of the process. They've each got a 300 word um, limit um we'll then shortlist based on those questions um and invite people to come for an interview um in the week commencing the week commencing the um fourth between the fourth and the ninth of october um so that is that is kind of the plan um so i think that's a wednesday to a monday as opposed to a week commencing um but we'll invite people to interview in that period um so that that is the thinking um, and then formally people will become a member of the board as of January 2024, um, but we're hoping to have an induction activity before that um, will likely be a Saturday. Um, but we'll, we'll share further information on that. Um, but that's what the application process looks like. Um, we want it to be kind of really straightforward, really friendly. Um, we want to be really open um, throughout. So you'll find lots more information on the website um, about how to apply. Um, and if you've got any questions or you need kind of a more accessible form of applying, 
Um, obviously, you're all here, so I can ask questions now, which is great. Or you can always just drop us an email as well um, to the hello at yourtrusteesmovement.org inbox, um, and we can, we can get back to you um, as well. Okay. I'm going to hit, kick us off with a couple of the kind of more general questions that people have asked. Um, if you've got questions that you'd like to ask, please do feel free to drop them into the chat box um, or send them via message um, across to Young Trustees Movement. Um, and then Claire, I believe you're going to help us field some of the questions and kind of share them with me and then we'll we'll respond to you guys jointly there. Um, but hope the information was, was useful um, initially. Um, and yeah, if you've got questions, please, please do um, feel free to ask them. It's a, a really open space. Um, I think what normally happens in things like this is that nobody will ask a question. And then as soon as one person asks a question, everybody will start start asking questions. Um, so, so don't be shy um, and feel free to ask anything in the chat. Um, if nobody sends questions, I'm going to assume that means that we've done a wonderful job and that you've got all the information that you need and nobody needs to do anything further, which is great. Um, in terms of some of the questions that we've had submitted beforehand, um, we've had some questions around age, which I've addressed earlier. Um, we've had some questions about um, kind of the particular skills that we're looking for um, when we're recruiting. Um, the nice thing about this is that we're, we're recruiting from kind of a pretty a pretty blank slate in that we're recruiting for the first board of the organisation. Um, and so we don't have kind of a skills audit process that's identified gaps in the same way that you would if you only had one or two vacancies. Um, there is areas of work that are going to be particularly important to what we're doing, um, which we've listed in the application. So we're thinking about advocacy campaigns or influencing, fundraising, partnerships, business development, governance or charity law regulation, financial management, budget management or accounting, um, and then policy development are areas that, that we, we think those skills or experiences are going to be particularly helpful, but that is not an exhaustive list. Um, and as I've said before, the, the experience is kind of um, a piece of the puzzle. We're also really interested in perspectives and skills that, that people can bring and that people can offer. Um, so don't feel as though you, you have to kind of flex what you've got to fit, fit those areas. Um, but in terms of skills, that is kind of what we've identified, but no core skills gaps, which gives us the nice flexibility to make sure we've got a nice, well-rounded, balanced board, which is really nice. Um, there's a couple of other questions, which actually, Claire, I might ask for kind of your, your input here. Um, there's one on kind of what our agenda looks like moving forwards. I think the, the, answer, the answer on this from me, which Claire, you can comment on as well, um, the answer from me is that in terms of what, what the future looks like, we're going to be continuing to drive that core mission of supporting young people on the charity boards, supporting them to really thrive in that environment. I'm back with you all, which is good. Um, Claire, I don't know where I got up to there before I cut out. I, I maybe, yeah, you cut out. I was wondering if it was me or you. Um, so uh, you got to talking about our core agenda and you were talking about uh, that we'll be obviously continuing with that core tenant of supporting young people into those spaces and their experiences there. And then we lost you. Right, for sure. Um, I guess I think basically what I said was we're, we're going to continue driving that core agenda. Um, but the really exciting thing about this opportunity is that there's a chance for people to come in and help shape the real kind of strategic direction, the real kind of, you know, objectives of what are we going to be, how are we going to be measuring impact in the next few years? And what are we really driving towards? Um, and how are we going to operationalize that kind of big picture vision? I think is the, is the stage that we're at now. Um, but Claire, you, you'll have insight to share on that as well. Yeah, thanks, Harry. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess from our perspective, we're also thinking about 
where we got to in the last couple of years since 2019 and where do we want to go? And I guess a question we're asking ourselves is where do we put our energy? What are the systems that we want to try and influence? And, and then what are the organisations or what are the mechanisms for us to, to do that? So that will definitely be part of, um, I guess, some rethinking and reformulating work that we need to do is on that kind of systems level thinking, what are the spaces we want to occupy? And I guess maybe some helpful context there is that we've been contacted, for example, by lots of public service organisations, corporate organisations who can see the value of the work we do and are already doing really great work to inspire change in the spaces they exist in. So do we want to um, really activate that further and take our work into these different spaces really intentionally or not? Do we keep doing what we're doing and know that we're having this impact in other areas as well? So I think those are some of the questions that we'll be thinking about and need to um, refine as we move into a kind of new strategic period as well. Perfect. Yeah, for sure. Um, should we take some of the questions from the chat and then I can come back to any that haven't been covered off before that? Yeah, thanks for your questions, everyone. Um, so we've got a couple of questions, Harry. Um, we've got a question um, about how many of the existing board are we um, carrying forward? And uh, then I guess the main question there is how many people are we recruiting for the board moving forwards with our formal trustee positions? For sure. Yeah, great question. Um, thank you for that one. Um, so yeah, we're, we're looking to have a total board size um, between six and eight um, is kind of where, where we're heading. Um, in terms of how many of the current, the existing board are remaining, um, I think we recognise the balance between having new perspectives has been really important, um, but also the, the importance of kind of making sure there's some continuity there for the staff team and for the movement as a whole. Um, and so there's an internal process running at the moment um, where we're kind of working through um, the number of, of board members that, that are going to remain. Um, what, what I will say is that it's not, it's a board of five currently. Um, and and all, all five are not are not going to be going to be remaining or continuing. Um, so I would expect it to be kind of largely that that six to eight largely made up of of new new board members um, with with one or two um, continuing is is what I would say. Um, Claire, does that feel fair to you? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I guess just to echo something that um, Harry's already shared in terms of. The board that we currently got in place were always set up as our transition board to really help us take us from where we were to this point of recruiting this formalized trustee board um, and they've done a phenomenal job um, at supporting us in that work perfect great and then i think there's a there's a question as well on kind of that we can probably deal with on what what the application process looks like um and just to clarify is it only the application questions and then an interview um, and yes, that's the case, um, application questions um, and then the interview. Um, we wanted to make this really straightforward for people. Um, we might be making life really hard for ourselves in terms of making decisions, um, but we're aware that we're recruiting into a voluntary role. Um, obviously, all expenses very much covered, um, but we're aware that we're recruiting into a voluntary role. And so we, we don't want to take up you know, huge amounts of people's time unnecessarily. So we've kind of deliberately kept that process as streamlined as possible to make it inclusive and accessible. Claire, do you want to take the next question on staffing? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there might be uh, the next one or two, maybe I can just jump in with. Um, yeah, so thanks to the question about how many staff we've currently got. Um, we currently have uh, one full-time member of staff, that's our training manager, Grace, who delivers incredible work um, and really is the engine behind all of that external delivery that Harry was talking about. Um, we also have normally full-time CEO role, that's normally me that I'm in that role at the moment, part-time. Um, we have then three part-time members of staff, the communications manager, business development manager and administrative assistant. Those are all part-time roles, um, two of those are freelance. Um, and three of them are, are payroll roles. We, we, I guess it's probably fair to say, Harry, that we, um, we're quite an agile organization. Like we have a movement structure and that really works for what we want to do. Does mean that we are in this period of transition and change. And so part of what um, I imagine the board will want to, to help us do as an organization is to think about, okay, now we've got a strategy for the next couple of years. What's the staffing that we need to fulfill that? Um, but we've always been a small organization, small team, I don't imagine there'll be like such dramatic growth um, that will probably always stay fairly small. But again, that's something I guess the board would 
would take the lead on deciding. Yeah, we're, um, we're, we're not going to move to be a, being a 50, 50 FTE organisation overnight. Um, I don't think that, that's part of the vision, but I think there's definitely a, a realisation there, Claire, isn't there? And if staffing capacity is, is always helpful. Um, and so yeah. it's definitely something that the board will be looking at, I think. Brilliant. Um, so I hope that answers that question. Feel free to add further clarification if, if we haven't quite hit the mark on any of these. Um, there was another question about, is there funding in place for this transition? Will there be money in the bank from the off? Yes, there will be some money in the bank from the off. Um, we've been working really hard to, to build that funding and it's part of my role to make sure that as we move into the next tax year, we've got um, some really good funding in place. We've got our um, business development manager who's working with me on the strategy there and also actually some of the doing of the applications and thinking about what are the different pots that we think we can um, source income from. We also do charge for a majority of our training and delivery um, options. So we also receive income from that as well. Um, but as I think we've mentioned before, yes, the board will definitely be influential in thinking about and helping us shape um, the structure that we take financially moving forwards. Harry, did you want to add anything to that? No, that, that, that makes sense. I mean, I think it's, yeah, the, the important thing to say is that the, the, this isn't this isn't a new a new organization. This is an organization that already exists, transitioning into a new a new body, basically. Um, and so, yeah, the, the funding and the kind of operational stuff is very much there um, as well. Great. Um, and maybe maybe I can just add to that point, Harry. Um, I guess something that um, is probably worth naming as well is that we're not expecting our trustees to be fundraisers and do all of that work for us. Um, your, you know, your role is there to help us have really valuable discussions and bring input and perspective. Your role isn't to, to do all of that fundraising work. Um, that's really for, for us to do as a wider team and with a strategy in place to support that. Yeah, I think um, we, we're very big at encouraging organisations to think about the balance between strategic and operational. And I think we, we will practice what we preach there, definitely. Great. Um, and then we've got some questions about um, time commitment, Harry, and also how, how have we got on in terms of thinking about what the structure will be like going forward? I don't know if you're happy to take those on time commitment and what that future structure might look like and how we got on with that discussion. For sure, yeah. Time commitment is something that that we've kind of been discussing and, and been thinking about as a board. Um, so at the moment, the board is meeting monthly, um, although we envisage as we transition towards a more typical governance structure, um, i.e. much more strategic, much less operational. Um, as we transition into that structure and out of the current transition board position, we don't anticipate it would meet quite as regularly. Um, so we're anticipating kind of six to eight meetings a year, um, perhaps a balance of some kind of weekend, some weekday evening um, meetings, um, obviously with some some kind of, you know, reading of papers and things before those meetings. Um, so that that kind of is, is approximate in terms of time commitment. You're probably looking six to eight meetings a year, a couple of hours before each meeting to look at look over papers and that kind of thing. Um, and then wider support for movement and staff team as as you're able to give that capacity really um what we're really keen on is that we shouldn't be we shouldn't be over expecting of board members because we understand kind of that um we understand that has a has a big impact on the type of person who's able to do this role and so we're really keen to make sure that it's inclusive um and obviously there's that baseline commitment there of those kind of six to eight board meetings a year and that kind of thing um, which which we do need people to be able to, to support. Um, but beyond that baseline commitment, um, you know, there's kind of other opportunities to to be more involved if you wish to be, um, but but that's not a requirement that, that comes with the role. I think that's fair to say, isn't it, Claire? Fab. Um, and then the question on membership, and there's a really interesting one, and again, is is a structure, is something we've we've really been playing with and thinking about as well. Um, I think the, 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 the simple answer to this, some might say that it's a bit of a cop-out answer, um, but I think the, the simple answer to this is that we've, we've not made a decision on this yet. Um, we, it's been discussed, um, and one of the things that we're really keen to kind of make sure we maintain as we move into this new phase for the organisation is that we maintain the fact that we are a movement, and a movement is made up of people. Um, and that that is really important to us, that we make sure that that the people who form our movement and who you know we we serve and who we work for 
have a really active way of participating in decision making, being really involved in decisions that we make. Um, so, you know, discussions that have been had are things like, do we have a manifesto that uh, members of the wider movement are able to vote on? Um, we've been discussing kind of ways that the wider movement can influence board recruitment. Um, so, you know, further down the line, perhaps, may we look at some elected positions that are elected from movement members, etc. cetera. Um, but it's been discussed, but there's no formal decisions that are being taken on that. Um, and that is something that new members of the board will be able to continue to influence as well. Um, making sure we've got that buy-in from across the movement is so, so important to us um, moving forwards. Claire, anything you want to say on that? Thanks, Harry. I think I think you articulated that wonderfully. Um, I won't add anything to that if you're happy for me to go on to the next question. Perfect. So, yeah, there's, there's a, thanks, Harry. There's a really interesting question about, um, I guess, a bit more detail on like how the team itself works together, that internal team, the operational team. So um, I guess, yeah, so far we've been set up to be, I guess, essentially like remote first, like all of our team have... Um, have remote contracts work from home we don't have a physical space um what we do is we have weekly um a couple times a week kind of weekly check-ins across both staff team freelancers um and we also um have for example this month coming up something we're calling our strategy day which is in person um for the team for the board for our freelancers to um come together connect and also address some of these questions that we've been discussing today it's something that we are constantly evolving with as our team shifts, grows, as our board shifts, changes in terms of what do we actually need um, and how do we make sure that we still make sure that we can support our team members who live across the country and uh, make sure that they feel comfortable and confident doing their work and also have these points of connection. So it's something that I think should be fluid and is fluid for us at the moment, but we probably do need to do a bit more development on what it looks like going forward still. Yeah, I think we we recognise the the value that the, the inclusivity of remote can bring, uh, but we also recognise the value of that kind of connection and and making sure that people feel really committed to the movement and the cause and you know to each other at the end of the day. So I think we we kind of balance that really carefully. And yeah, like Claire says, we're in a in a process at the moment of working out fully what that balance needs to look like. Perfect, great question from Leah. I love this question. How are we ensuring that young people, trustees, um, are continuing to be a key voice in the movement as we transition? Um, I love this question. It's so important. Um, so in terms of how we're making sure that, that young people, trustees, continue to be, to be a key voice, um, we kind of discussed various things around this when we were kind of, when the, the transition board were making a decision on, on recruitment processes and on what that would look like. Um, so we discussed, should we have a kind of a fixed kind of, you know, number whereby 50% of the board will be under the age of 30, whereby kind of, you know, we have those, those quotas set. Um, we didn't set a kind of strict quarter like that. So we haven't got the strict 50% of the board will be under 30, etc. Um, we've not got that strict quarter in place for this process, although we would encourage the new board once appointed to think about that and think about what they want to do when we're setting the new organization up, creating things like new articles of association, et cetera, moving forward, how we want to really enshrine those commitments in our governing documents. So that's a really important kind of governancy point um, for kind of future board to think about in terms of what we're doing now to make sure young people trustees um, are continuing to be a key voice. Um, we're collecting that information um, as, as part of the recruitment process. Um, and as I said, we're really interested in making sure we've got balanced perspectives on the board. Um, so we're not making any requirements for kind of prior experience or anything like that, that would usually put younger applicants off applying for things like this. Um, so we're, we're avoiding that in our application process. Um, we're making it as straightforward as possible. So it's really accessible. Um, we're making sure that we reach out to groups to really promote this opportunity to groups of young people um, and, you know, under 30s, kind of professional networks, but also networks where voices aren't traditionally heard in governance arenas. So we're really being proactive in our outreach in promoting this role. Um, and I think it, it's really important to acknowledge that we've got more to do and more to figure out here as, as the movement grows and as we develop into how do we really enshrine this commitment to making sure young people and trustees are at the absolute heart of what we do. Um, I think the other thing to say 
um, is that we've got young people kind of involved in in the recruitment process, myself included in that. Um, and so the movement is is staying really true to those values in terms of making sure that that young people are really at the heart of making the decision decisions as to who the next members will be. That felt like a very long answer. Um, I hope that kind of makes sense later. Feel free to ask questions or probe further if you want to. Um, but it's something that's so, so important to us. Um, yeah, as we move forward and that we've got, I think, a lot more figuring out and thinking to do on. Claire, I don't know if there's anything you want to share there. I guess I could maybe just add a point to speak to the more operational side of, of young people's voice in the movement and how that informs the way we work. So um, we've in the last couple of years, we've had groups that we've called our ambassadors um, who have really been part of the movement from the very start and have been advocating for the work that we do and have been. Um, I guess we've also been celebrating them for the change that they're creating in the spaces that they exist in. Um, so we ran that almost like program for a couple of years where we brought on groups of ambassadors who went and sort of activated change in their own environments. A lot of that then shifted to become our what's now our transition board. How is one of those members on that transition board uh, along with five other people? So we are at a point again of transition of thinking, well, as we move from having a transition board to a trustee board, um, how do we also still make sure that we're um, including and that we're really driven by the voices of young people in our movement and it could look like an additional a separate advisory group for example that is always going to be young people or, or different infrastructure so in our process of setting up this trustee board we're also thinking about operationally what does it look like how can we make sure young people have the opportunities and spaces to really drive forward our work and our movement awesome Great stuff. Okay. The questions seem to kind of be, be, be slowing up a little bit in the chat, um, which it feels like we've been talking for quite a long time. So that, that, that maybe fits, fits with that. I'm just going to, I'm just having a scan over the, the questions that came in in advance. Um, we have somebody asking, kind of saying that they're particularly interested in kind of wildlife and environmental work um, and asking whether we are only interested in people with a background in kind of inequality, social justice, or whether that's something that's interested in us. Um, I think the, the key thing is that we're not looking for a specific type of person in this recruitment process. We're looking for somebody who is really committed to social justice. Um, but that doesn't mean that you have to have experience of social justice. And I think the important thing to say is that social justice is a really broad term. Um, I would definitely fit environmental and sustainable um, advocacy work within, within the broad umbrella of social justice, of thinking about how do we make this world function in a more, a more just way for people. We recognise that, you know, we can make, make that happen in a range of different ways. Um, and we're really interested in hearing all those different experiences and perspectives in terms of social justice through the application process. Um, so that's, that's really important to say. Um, and I think we've covered everything else off. Perfect. I think we're there. Great. Okay. So in terms of next steps, then, um, the I'm wondering if Claire maybe could share the link to the application again in the in the in the um, chat. I know you've done that once already, but if you could drop that in there just to give it to people to think about as they go away, that would be really helpful. Um, if there's further questions, anything you want to ask, then then feel free to, to get in touch with the email address, which is at the bottom of, of the application information there. Um, so you can get in touch with us. The application form is linked on, on our website as well. Um, so have a think about those, those application questions. Have a think about what, what your application is going to say, what you're going to involve. But if you're really passionate about social justice, you think you're aligned to our values and our mission, um, then we'd really love to receive an application from you. Um, thank you so much for coming along to, to find out more um, and to hear from us today. Um, and yeah, if there's any other questions, get in touch. But otherwise, um, I think we're done and we're good to let people head off to the rest of their days. So thank you all so much. <laughs>